Then on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we have Luke's description of the visitation by the angel Gabriel to Mary. The gospel reading starts in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. The first 25 verses tell about the birth of John the Baptist to Elizabeth, Mary's cousin. Then the gospel reading starts at verse 26. In the sixth month, and sixth month meaning this is the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled as what he was saying and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month of her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Both the Gospels of Luke and Matthew have accounts of the birth of Jesus and the events surrounding it. Luke tells the story from the viewpoint of Mary, which we can distinctly see here in Luke's Gospel. Meanwhile, Matthew tells the story from the viewpoint of Joseph, which we will see in the Gospel reading from Matthew's Gospel on Christmas Day. Here, Mary is told how she will conceive the Son of God. Now, looking at this passage, we see twice it's clearly stated that Mary was a virgin, one who cannot give birth to a child due to not having had sexual relations with a man. Luke wants to make it clear that she did not have relations with a man and calls her a virgin and makes sure it's mentioned twice in this passage. Verse 31, we see Gabriel telling her to name him Jesus. After Gabriel informs her he will occupy the throne of David in a kingdom with no end, in verse 34, Mary is the first to question the virgin birth. In verse 35, Gabriel gives her the explanation that the Holy Spirit will be the instrument of conception. He calls the child holy. He will be called holy. He had to inform her of this, since the Jews consider a woman after delivery is considered unclean. That's because they knew a woman brings a sinner into the world. The only way that Jesus could be called holy is if he is not born in the sin of Adam, does not have original sin. Verse 36 after commenting that Elizabeth has conceived a son when she was too old to bear children, the angel gives the answer as to how this was possible in verse 37, for nothing will be impossible for God. So now Mary believes it. She accepts God's will and receives it and acknowledges that it was by words that it was done. She says, according to your word. So who was the first person to receive the Eucharist? Was it one of the apostles, the disciples, who sat at the Last Supper with Jesus when he said, take this, for this is my body, and take, drink, this is my blood? No, it is Mary. She was first to receive the Eucharist. She is actually receiving the body and blood of Jesus into her womb. It's shortly after this event that Mary leaves Nazareth to visit Elizabeth to the south in Judea, who was pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary returns then three months later, after John is born. 
It's when Mary returns to Nazareth that it is most likely when Joseph becomes aware of Mary's pregnancy. 